Okay, Timothy. Are we going? You're on. Well, good morning, friends. Here's our Where's PK on this gorgeous day that God has given us. And we are here to hear from the good book with good friends and with some good coffee. So let us pray. Gracious God, as we gather in your presence from near and far, Lord, we, we just are in awe of everything that you bless us with. So, Lord, we say thank you. We praise your name. Uh, Lord, we ask that <clears throat> as we go through your day, we think of those wonderful words of the prayers that Jesus taught us. Um, Lead us not into temptation. And Lord, that means to help us protect from ourselves as well as from other challenges and, and to help us to live your will, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, may we be your vessel to fulfill that prayer. So Lord, guide us through our scripture for today. And may we be bold stewards in this mystery of faith. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So friends, today we finish up 2 Timothy. So we're in 2 Timothy chapter 4. The title in my uh, Bible for this chapter is called Charge to Carry Out the Ministry. Paul's not just speaking to Timothy here, so he's speaking to all of us. I solemnly urge you in the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who will someday judge the living and the dead when he appears to set up his kingdom. Preach the word of God. Be prepared, whether the time is favorable or not. Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teaching. For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to the sound of wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. But you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news a fully carried, and fully carry out the ministry God has given you. As for me, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have remained faithful. <clears throat> and now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness where the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. Timothy, please come as soon as you can. Damas has deserted me because he loves the things of this life and has gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia and Titus has gone to Dalmatia. Only Luke is here with me. Bring Mark with you when you come for he will be helpful to me in my ministry. I sent Tychius to Ephesus. When you come, be sure to bring the coat I left with Carpus at Tross. Also bring my books and especially my papers. Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm, but the Lord will judge him for what he has done. Be careful of him for he fought against everything we said. The first time I was brought before the judge, no one came with me. Everyone abandoned me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood with me and gave me strength so I, that I might preach the good news in its entirety for all the Gentiles to hear. And he rescued me from certain death. Yes, the Lord will deliver me from every evil attack and will bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. All glory to God forever and ever. Amen. Give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila and those living in the household of Oniphorus, 
Estratus stayed in Corinth, and I left Trophimus sick in Miletus. Do your best to get here before the winter. Eubelus sends you greetings, and so do Prudence, Linus, Claudia, and all the brothers and sisters. May the Lord be with your spirit, and may his grace be with all of you. Here ends Paul's letter to Timothy. Um, you know, in and out of here, there's some very profound theological writings, and yet you can still hear the very uh, paternal heart that Paul has for Timothy. Um, in the beginning of all this, we know that Paul truly believes that God has called Timothy to spread the good news. That God has ordained Timothy as one of his, his leaders. And he's encouraging Timothy to be faithful, to uh, stand strong for what he believes and for what he has been taught, and to courageously preach the good news. Um, last week, our gospel lesson, or wasn't, excuse me, wasn't our gospel lesson, but our scripture lesson out of Acts was, when one, was uh, one of the situations when the disciples were in the uh, temple in Solomon's colonnade and they were boldly preaching and people were bringing sick and uh, uh, demon-possessed people to just have the shadow of Peter fall across them. And, of course, the high priest had the disciples arrested, and they were in prison. But God sent his angel to release the disciples from prison and told them, go back to the temple and continue preaching what I have given you. And they did. Well, the next morning, the high priest uh, convened their council and they send the guard to go get the prisoners, and the guard comes back and says, they're gone. But yet, the door is still locked, and the guards are there, but there's nobody in the cells. Now remember, a prison cell back in that day was basically a cave. No windows, no air ventilation, maybe it was wet and stinky, and they never cleaned it out, or anything like that. So they couldn't have looked in to see that the prisoners was, were there because it was pitch black. Well, then the word came that they were again in the temple in Solomon's colonnade and they were again preaching, doing exactly what they had been told not to do. So the high priest and his, or excuse me, the, the captain of the guard uh, took his group and went after him, went after them and brought them back to the high priest. And, of course, the high priest got after him and says, we directly ordered you not to do this, not to preach the, in the name of that man. And now you're blaming us for his death. Well, the disciples together said, we must obey our God. Paul is reminding Timothy of the same thing. Obey your God. Preach the good news. Even though Timothy knew all the persecution Paul went through, Paul says, I never wavered. And he said, it, and, and we have to stand strong even today against wholesome teaching. We know the truths of what Scripture has told us. We have all of these stories of the disciples, um, of Paul, of Timothy, and of all of these others that are standing strong in the face of those who are not wanting to hear wholesome teaching. The same problems back then are the same problems we face today. Nothing has changed. Yet the majority of people are good. We hear about the bad because bad news sells on the news. 
but if you really think about percentage per population of those that are causing the bad problems is very little. But the problems they're causing are horrific. And in this country, we have the right to pre peacefully protest. And that right should not be taken away from us. We may not agree with some of the things that they're protesting. We may agree with some of the things they're protesting. But they have the right to peacefully gather and protest. And that shouldn't be taken away from us. We just need to continue to pray for and to stand strong in our teachings of the truth, the teachings of love, to help everyone understand what Christ did for us, why Christ did it for us, and what God has in store for us. And within all of this, we need to keep a clear mind. We need to keep our focus. Because in chapter five, verse 5, excuse me. But you should keep a clear mind in every situation. This is what Paul is saying to Timothy. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has given you. Powerful words of encouragement. And those are the same words of encouragement to us today. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. I don't know that we're going to be thrown in prison today. I don't think they let that, that can happen. But we people may talk bad about us. People may try to discredit us. Uh, those that want to take scripture and manipulate it for their own use. Um, those are the false teachers. Those are the ones who... It's, we call it contextualizing. They make it work for them and for their means. But this next part, these next two verses are some of my favorite verses that Paul has written. And he's talking about the end of his life with such courage and such hope. As for me, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my departure is near. I fought the good fight. I have finished the race and I have remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me. Crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. For all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. Um, in verse 6, Paul uses a unique word here. He uses the time of my departure is near. Now, back in that day, the majority of their travel was either by foot or by boat. And, and if we think about the word departure, that means we're getting ready to either get on a boat, get on a plane, get on a train, Maybe get in our vehicle to, to, to go someplace. Now, we hope that that boat, that plane, that train, and our vehicle are in good working order, right? That the mechanics have all looked at it, that everything is ready for our trip. Think about that. Paul is hoping that, Paul knows, he knows the time of my departure is near. When we leave, when we depart, we are in the best shape, or we'll be leaving in the best shape. It's not like in that day when a ship would pull back into port and they've been battered and, and beaten by the waves and the sea and, and all of this when maybe the, the main mast has got a crack in it or the sails are torn. It's not like when we pull into the dock, a wreck, but no, he's, he's ready in his spirit. His body may be failing, but in his spirit, he is, 
he is whole and he is healthy and he is ready for his departure to the kingdom of God to become what he was intended to become. And that's for all of us with our, at our, when our physical bodies, our mortal bodies cease to exist, we then get to experience in the fullest what we have been created to be, but what was lost because of the original sin. That what we were created to be was in a right and just and perfect relationship with God. When our mortal bodies die, we get that. We depart whole in that perfect relationship once again. Paul is looking forward to this. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me. The crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous God, will give me on the day of his return. And he encourages Timothy and he encourages all of us. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. Wow. How about those words, friends? How about all of that that's packed into two verses? Do you find peace in that thought? Do you find some peace? I mean, we know that heaven is great. Scripture tells us that. Jesus, story after story, says the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven is like. And then he describes something beautiful. Or gives a story or analogy of something beautiful that we can understand. Now our fear becomes getting from point A, which is here, to point B. What is that physical dying process of our body going to be like? That's what's scary. But those that believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, those that have done their best to fight the good fight, that have done their best to remain faithful, the prize awaits. And that is that relationship with God. That is standing before our Creator and our Savior, our Redeemer, and hearing those words, well done, good and faithful servant. Does that make your knees melt? Does that make you want to drop to your knees and praise God? It should. It should. And in the rest of, of uh, chapter 4, Paul encourages Timothy to come see him because he desperately wants to see him before he, his physical body dies. He talks about the disappointment of those that he thought were close to him who have deserted him in his difficult times. But yet he also talks about those that have gone to continue spreading the good news, to continue defending our God and Jesus and all that he has to offer for us. And there are certain things that he asks Timothy to bring. And he warns them of difficult people again. And he warns them that, and, and we have, and I experienced that too, when I, people that I thought were my friends, that when I told them I was entering the ministry, that I felt God had called me to pulpit ministry and, and to rural um, ministry, there were people who I was very surprised at their reactions, who... I don't know if that intimidated them, if that made them feel guilty, but there were people who no longer associated with me. And that was difficult. But the Lord helped me stand strong and didn't let that change my mind or scare me. God has put many wonderful people in my life 
Um, and it's obviously, those are incredible God moments for me. Paul continues talking about God rescuing him and delivering him from every evil attack. Um, and then he offers his final greetings and blessings. Give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila. And then he lists many others and, and uh, um, men and women. He calls brothers and sisters. And then his final words. May the Lord be with your spirit and may his grace be with all of you. Friends, those are the last words I leave you with this morning. May the Lord be with your spirit and may his grace be with all of you. Friends, this is Where's PK? Figure out where I'm at. Hopefully this is an easy one. And uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and to grant you peace. Next week, we go into Titus. Goodbye, friends.